speak to us and inspire us so that you all can go, can go ahead and make history for yourself. I was in the fifth grade class today, Miss Evans' class, and they were working on their essays and studying their people and doing an excellent job. Today we get to do it in person. And I am so glad to introduce Miss Harper Nelson because she is from my hometown. Eastside Dreams. Oh. I'm going to go down to her. 
other guests and then I'm going to get a chance to come back down here. But thank you so much. We appreciate you. We can stop the video. You ready? All right. All right, here we go. This is a little video that she brought to introduce who she is. I love to have fun. I don't want us to be serious in here. I want something that I say to say, ooh, maybe I can. Maybe I can take that Maybe I can. When times are hard, I can keep going. I can push, 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 right? Um, I always say when you're seeing me now, you're seeing what I call the end product. You're seeing me now after I'm one of the Olympics, um, after I'm married, I have two kids. But I promise you, right? She said, what? Okay, two kids, hey, hey. Um, but I, I promise you, at one point in time, I was in your seat. Yes, I have traveled the world. I've been to Beijing, so China. I've been to, right? I've been to France. I've been to Paris, the top of the Eiffel Tower. I have been to a place called Budapest. Well, where's that? Um, I've been to a place called Croatia. Where's that, right? Um, I have been all over the world. But I promise you, I started in these seats. When I was in these seats, I did not know what I really, really, really wanted to do. Didn't know exactly where I was going to kind of end up in life. But what I knew was I was blessed to have parents or guardians that could guide me along the way. I'm from a place called East St. Louis. It's called City of Champions, right? City of Champions means great things. It means you can do whatever champion you want. You're on top, you figure things out, you're on good. But in reality, Every time I told somebody I could be saying to you, they said, you get up. You're not smart. Right. Exactly. Didn't know anything about me. We just said, because I'm from a place called East St. Louis, I'm going to basically amount to that. And I'm going to be honest, I want to be very, very genuine, honest in these conversations. That hurt every single time I heard it. It made me want to cry every single time I heard it. To be judged by people that never knew me. But the blessing was I had family and I had support. So I was like, I don't know you. So I was like, oh, she right. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna say something, you're gonna be like, you don't know me. How many times have we all been in a situation where you see somebody and they want to just talk about you? And you're like, I ain't never exactly. Okay, man, I don't know you. Told you that eventually, because it's not easy in the moment. This, you gotta let it roll off the bat. Because like I said, always remember, they don't know. So when I was younger, from a two-parent household, but then my parents got divorced. Oh, I want to talk about the real stuff, right? That was hard. I don't know if any of you here that may be raised by a single-parent household or you with guardians. That was extremely hard because me, I'm a daddy's girl. If my daddy goes somewhere, I want to go with him. If he's sleeping, I'll take a nap too. I want to do whatever my daddy's doing. And then my parents separated. And that was very, 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 very shit. Very, 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 very hard. My mental, it flipped my world upside down. Everything was cool, took her household, me and my sister in place, we go so my mom and dad there, and then all of a sudden it was just my mom. 
Well, I'm supposed to do with this information. And at the time, I asked him, does he not love me enough to stay? Like, what's, what's up? Why? It wasn't that. Situations happened with adults. And at the time, that's what was best for them. My father told me that he loved me constantly. But I was blessed to him. Bam. Track and field. And I say blessed because he gave me another outlet. I wasn't thinking about home life all the time, right? Um, and when I first started, mom was not the best. You know, I wasn't going to wake until everybody said, oh, I bet you for the first day. Nope, I got beat a lot. That was not fun at all to lose. But you know what I realized? I really, really love the sport. It was an outlet for me. I had met some bomb friends, right? People that I did not know. And I was actually really scared to try track. I was like, I know nothing about this sport. My mother's like, these people told me about this sport called track. I think you should try it. I don't know they were girls. I'm like, should I go out? Would I go out there? like me? Like, what do I have in common? I don't know. But I tried it. And I have some of my best friends to this day because at the age of 12, I tried track. So I'm saying that to say, there are going to be some things in life that you may want to try that you don't really know who people are. You don't know them. I don't know them girls. They already clicked up on her. I don't know them. Just try it. And if you don't like it, then you can say, okay, I don't like it. But if you don't try if I never tried track, I would have never gone to the Olympics, right? Um, something else in my life, my parents were very serious about grades. I know everyone in here is straight edge students. I know. I ain't got A. Okay, no. So my parents were serious about grades, as in A's and B's don't bring no C's, no D's, no F's in this house. And the reason why my parents were like that, because I was very capable. I was making A's and B's. So my parents asked me to do it. That wasn't anything crazy, but around the eighth grade, so I knew. I had to get A's and B's. That was just the requirement. And they said, if you don't do this, then you can't do this, right? If you don't get your grades, you can't run track. And the school, I like to joke and say, the school made the mistake of putting my best friend in my class, in science class. Girl, we talked, and we talked, and the teacher was talking, and we talked, and we talked. I ain't worried what she talking, and we talked, and guess what? My grade went from a B to a D. And so then they sent something home called progress report card. So my mother, this is what your child would be making if we gave out grades right now. And it was a D. And my mama lost it. And I was like, oh Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I don't know how to make it. She had every right to lose it on me. Because I said it was a B, right? A B. Now it's a D. Meaning I can make a B, but because I'm talking too much, now I have a D. Meaning you plan too much. Meaning, I understand if I have to do this, but I don't, then that means I can't run track. So what did my mom do? She said, you're not running track. I was like, why would she take my dream from me? Does she not love me? Oh, no, I love track. Why would she tell me I can't run no more? Well, because I was supposed to make good grades. How many times has the adults in our lives, our teachers, our parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, told us, if you don't do this, then you can't do this. You don't do this thing. And now you can't do this, and you mad at the adult. You're like, why would they tell me I can't? I wanted to go with my friends. Mm -hmm. They told you, if you do this, you can't do this. I knew I had to get the grades, and I didn't, so I couldn't run track. The track coach even came to my house and came to the front door and said, please let your daughter run. My mother said, if she doesn't get her grades, there's nothing you can do for her. So I need to get off of my porch, and until she gets her grades up, she can't come off the track. You better believe in a few days my grade was back up. And I never let that happen again. So understand, you are absolutely, the things that you can control, you are absolutely in control of those things. You are absolutely in control of your grades. In that sense, you are absolutely in control of your future. It's up to you whether you don't work. It's up to you whether you listen to class. It's up to you if you don't understand something. So raise your hand and say, sorry, I didn't understand that part. Or go to your teacher after class, right? That's totally up to you. Now I go on to high school. Now we're gonna get to the fun part. We're gonna talk about boys. Oh, oh, okay. I just knew. I was gonna end up with him. Listen, you couldn't tell me I wasn't gonna marry him because he was so cute. Y'all, he had green eyes. Oh, okay. Understand me when I say my baby's gonna have green eyes. They 
they don't because I did not end up winning. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now let me explain about the situation. I just, I just reply to him. He really liked me. I'm like, oh my goodness, we're gonna be together. One thing that I've always felt though is, if I like you and you like me, why can't we succeed together? Why can't we be? Beyonce and Jay Z. Right? But somehow it seems that oftentimes when we like somebody, all of a sudden, I just like them so much. I don't care about anything in life. I just want to be with them. I don't care about my grades. I don't care about my family. I just want to be with them. What? Why are we pushing out everything else? Well, all of a sudden, I don't want to keep with my friends anymore. I just want to be with them. I don't care about the world. I don't care about school. School is stupid now. I just want to be with this person. But if I'm doing that, then I'm going to go up and get a good job and make some good money. So then we can get the things we want to get, right? Nice cars, have a house, when I want to go shopping, go to shopping with my boy. You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay, whoever was, all those things. Yes. But I say, it's all up to you, right? It's up to you when you start liking this person and you push out everything else in your life. I was very clear in high school. I like you so much. You're like, oh, we so hungry, Mary. But I gotta go class though. Like I'm gonna like you so many bell ring, you're gonna be so cute again. Right? It's no, it's a it's a balance to it. They they still there, they're still the same cute person, green eyes in the hallway. Get your work done. Then y'all go kick it again. Oh what the bell ring, you gotta go, gotta go. As you get older, it's gonna be decisions you're gonna have to make. You have to understand who you are. You should not have them all of a sudden you watch one person. So you're gonna like somebody so, 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 so much. Ooh, they gonna be so fine. Oh, you're gonna find somebody you're gonna like. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. She is gonna. Don't let that change. Schoolwork still gotta get done. If you want sports, you still gotta go to practice. One thing I actually did, because the person that I was talking to, I told him, look, I wanna go places in life. Eventually, it sounds really bad. Eventually, he started skipping. He asked me one time to skip school. Y'all know what skipping school is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He asked me one time to skip school. I was like, no. Oh. That's how I said it. Because we don't even discuss. No, you know I'm the type of person. I'm not the type that's going to skip. Don't ask me such outrageous questions. He asked one time. I said, no. He never asked again. He proceeded to, he would skip school. I'm in school. That's you with your business. Right? Yeah. I dated him way too long. So we weren't we, we didn't have the same goals. I dated him way too long. Coaches came to practice one time. I'm at track practice. And they said, Hey, he's not here. Where is he? He on eighty third street at his cousin's house. He over there playing, he should be. I was at practice. I'm snitching. You ain't supposed to be you supposed to be at practice like me. If you gonna be with me, we can't right. together. Why can't we do the right thing? Because I don't track me. I wanna roll out. I wanna run real, real fast. So I gotta go practice all the time. Right? Me liking you doesn't change me that I still want to be fast. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you got to stay on that path. You got the adults in your life, ask them questions. If you feel confused about something, I was blessed so I had a really good support system. So as I went on my journey, my mom, my dad told you it was, it was hard, right? My parents separated, but my dad was still there in my life to ask me questions. He was a phone call away. So I'm in high school. Your day is knucklehead. I don't know. It was a knucklehead. I went on to, I won state, right? So when you get to high school, there's real big track meet for the whole state. All the athletes that are qualified get there. So say all of you the athletes that are there. Y'all real, real bad. Y'all there, we're going to race against the I beat all y'all. Ooh, right? Huh? I beat everybody. I was a fan of the state, and I broke what this called a state record. So, anyone in the state of Illinois that's ever running, if they ran 13 seconds, that's the fastest anybody in Illinois, I was 12 now. I beat 13 seconds. As a freshman, as a ninth grader, no one had ever done that. So, I won 100 hurdles to 300 hurdles. I got fifth in the 200, and I think we got like third or fourth in the four by one. So, I'm making history. I'm not realizing how big that is. I'm just a kid. I love to run. My 10th grade year, I play around too much in the gym and I hurt my knee. Ooh. I have to have knee surgery. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, like they like surgery. Cut me open. Ooh, what's that? Oh, 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 oh,
this week. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Um, and the doctor said that it was so bad there was a chance that I would never run as fast as And I'm gonna be honest. In the tenth grade, I can't comprehend running being over. For me. But what I did know was. My physical therapist, that's the person that was going to help me heal, help me work out and get better. I do understand that. If, if I had a chance, he had to keep. So I did everything he told me to do, right? So now I'm in 11th grade. I'm at the state meeting again. Remember, I told you, 9th grade, you're out. 10th, I won. Everything. I was famous. 11th grade. Because I did the work, I won everything again. I did. And I broke my whole life. Story. My parents said grades is important. And I told you I never let my grades slip again. I got A's and B's, and I'm over here winning these. So I was then blessed to get what is considered a full ride. They paid for my whole college experience at UCLA. I go to UCLA. That's in California. That is nowhere near family. That is nowhere near anybody I know. So I get off the plane. And you know how me and you have never met? We've never seen each other before? Mm -hmm. I've dropped off in a place where I've never seen anyone in this state before. I have no mom, no dad, no cousins, no friends, no family. I know no one. So that is a very, very, very lonely feeling. That's a very scary feeling. What I do know is that my parents have raised me to make good decisions. I did have a phone for one holiday. But then I had a coach that I had met a number of times, and she promised me and my mom that she was going to do everything in her power to make sure that I got a good education from UCLA. She said, I'm going to make sure she has family out here. And the track team became my family. So then, now I have these girls that I get up with all the time, and we work out all the time. And it was a time where I was on the ground, and I was like, Lord, why did I choose track? <laughs> this is terrible. Like I couldn't walk back to my dorm, to my where I slept on a dorm, dormitory, dorm room. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk back to where I was so tired. So I was way off the track for hours. Like Lord Jesus, why? <laughs> and I still had class that I had to go to. So I'm going to class. There was a class. One of my classes, three hundred people in it. Right. I looked up and it was just. It's people, it's all I can see. It's people. And then the other difference is, I was the only black person. Oh, yeah. It's insane. But you know what that also does? That makes you question if you belong. Black person. No one looks like me. Do they think like me? Am I smart enough to hang with them? Okay. Can I cut it? And the scary part was, I was the only person since Jackie joined a curse and that at that time was some years in between that had been in UCLA. So everyone from the city of St. Louis was saying, can this girl, Dawn Harper, cut it? Can she make it? Is she smart enough? So now everyone's paying attention. My uncle had a guy in the barbershop come up to him and say, I'll bet you money your niece will be back within the first West quarter, but first three months. Well, I don't say that. Once again, didn't I tell you, people will not know you, but will swear that they don't tell you what you can do. What I tell you, wait a minute, get the hat in front. Say what? You don't know me? You don't know me? So what I said was, if nothing else in life, that man gonna have to pay my uncle that money. I'ma graduate from this school. I'ma get my degree. And once again, that hurt my feelings, and I was super sad. So that's the other thing. Things want to happen, and if you get sad or mad, that's not a weird feeling. It's going to be things that's going to make you real mad. It's going to make you real sad. People shouldn't tell you shouldn't be mad or sad. It's what you do with it, right? I got sad and mad. If I got so sad and mad about what that man said, it was like, oh, God, I'm just, I'm just least going to school. That's me messing with my own future because he said something crazy and insane. Don't let someone else's opinion of you change what your goals and dreams are. It's going to hurt that someone says you can't do it. You're going to like, why would they? Do they see something in me that I don't see? 
Do I not have it? No, they don't know you. You talk to your support system, your mom and your dad, and you say, my boss, can I do it? She goes, yes, baby, yes, you can. You're like, thank you, mom. You go on about your business. It's going to be times that you're going to be sad. It's okay to be sad. I have been sad so many times. It has been things that has not worked out so many times. And I'm like, Lord, why? Listen, sometimes you got to take your bumps and bruises and you got to keep on going. So at UCLA at a class of 300, so I told myself, I'm just going to do the best I can. I don't know if I can keep up with the 299 people. I just know I have to get these grades in order to pass at this university. And so when you're at a university, when you get that many people in a classroom to give you this experience, you have what's called a student ID number. So when your teacher is giving out grades, they don't go by Dawn Harper, they go by a number, okay? So if you got your paper back, it wouldn't say your name, it would say a number. My number was 7115950. Exactly, that's how ingrained it is. I was a number. So since I'm a number, and it's 300 of us, I need my teacher to know me. So I need to go and meet them, right? Sometimes you feel like they don't know who I am. Go and meet them. I know in today's age, you just want to send DMs and send emails, and I'm going to just send a text message. I want to talk to them face to face. Sometimes it's better to talk face to face. It's better for you to get to know them, them to know you. It won't hurt you. It actually may make you feel more comfortable to say, oh, I actually talked to that person. That was, my teacher is really nice. They're not just the face that I see every day. They're an actual person. Just like you're a person, your teacher's a person. If you choose to do a sport, the person next to you, they're a person. We're all people. Sometimes we should drop our guard and say, hi, my name is Dawn. What's your name? Right? Just try to be people. It's okay to be Okay. Okay. So now you see a lady, but I still have this dream of going to the Olympics. But like, what's that really look like? Once again, I don't know how to get there, but my coach knows how to get there. So I talked to my coach. We sat down. We came up with the game plan of these are the steps that you need to go through to make it to the Olympics. The big old old, the big old Olympics. At the Olympics, the world, like the Earth, like the world, they send their greatest athletes there. The fastest of the fastest from each country. And I graduated from UCLA. I'm working the plane. But I, when you run professionally, Nike, we all know like Nike or Adidas or Puma, they typically will pay an athlete to run for them. Well, Nike and Adidas and Puma told me, you're not fast enough to run for us. So we're not going to pay you. And I'm like, well, how am I going to pay for this dream? So I worked four jobs. You know how sometimes you hear about people working one or two jobs? <clears throat> Oftentimes, when we see someone that's working more than one job, we look down on them. Because they're like, are they not educated? Why they got to work multiple jobs to make you? You don't know someone's story, right? They could be saying, I'm doing this right now for this period of my life because I'm working towards this. I'm doing this because I want to pay for school. I need mean, a person in my family to do something, so I have to do something uh, that's not ordinary. Do something extraordinary, right? So if you hear that someone's working two or three jobs, don't look down on them. I work four. Y'all would have thought I was terrible. I had a degree from UCLA that worked four jobs to chase my dream. If I wouldn't have worked those four jobs, I would not be where I am today. So I say working those four jobs was a blessing. I made a decision to say my father disagreed. Highly, he called me and said, "What are you doing with your life? Why are you over? We we sent you to UCLA not to work no for you. What you doing?" I was like, "Daddy, I got a plan. Please, 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 please just support me." He was like, "I think you're tripping." But okay, that's what my dad said. He does not believe that I'm going to go through So that's another lesson. There are gonna be people in your life that you look up to. My own father, and I know he did no harm. He loved me so, so, so. My dad loved me so, 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 so much. But he was like, "I think you're tripping." I don't think you know what's best for you right now. And I was like, Dad, I swear I do, Dad. Please just keep, please, please. Seriously, I was on the phone crying to my father, trying to explain to him. I believe I had it count. There's so many times in your life that someone you thought would support you was going to say, I don't think that's what's good. Sometimes, sometimes, you thought it would chase that dream. And I chose to work those four jobs. 
I go to the Olympic trials. It's still so much in between us, but I go to the Olympic trials, and they only take three in the U.S. The United States of America only says three athletes. I got third at the Olympic trial, which was I. I lost it. Like I say, those pictures are the most beautiful slash ugliest pictures I've ever seen in my life. Cause I was like. Ugh. Like, I just, I lost it. You know how you want to pretty crap out of that? Oh, this is so crazy. I mean, <laughs> no, I was like, oh, the these, like, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, take this. And they was click, 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 click. And I was like, oh, those are going to be online. <laughs> yeah. And those, oftentimes, for many years, those were the pictures that people used when I would go and do presentations. I was like, oh, yep, that's me. <laughs> so I show up like, I look better now because I look crazy over there. Um, but in that moment, it was the most beautiful feeling to know that all of my hard work, every person that seen you from me said those you were not selected was wrong. Um, sad to say, but my daddy was wrong, right? Um, being in that class of 300 and I didn't know if I belonged, I did belong. Um, anytime that I ever questioned myself, I was wrong, right? I was wrong because I, I wasn't good enough. And I'm here to tell you, that I have not met you, but I, I promise you, you're good enough. Even though you're that little, you're good enough. You feel like right now, I just, I'm not so school, and then I go and I play with my friends, and I go home, and I eat dinner, and I do homework, and I go to bed. You're good enough. You're good enough. Little things that you do right now, they don't forget things like that. These little things you're good enough, you're good enough. The time that you cry, you're like, really sick, really sick. So in high school, just make sure I touch on this point because it needs to be said. I got talked about a lot. Like John, do y'all call do y'all say Johnny? Mm-hmm. Okay, Johnny. Because when I went to California, I said John, they didn't know what that word was. Um, so they were talking about me. Because I was so dark. Mm-hmm. No, they were like, you so so black. And I remember thinking to myself, so okay, if you, if I'm talking about it because of my skin complaint. That hurts to me. That hurts differently because if you talk about me because of my clothes, then maybe I go home and like, oh, can we get these new these new Jordans? Can I can I get these things? This is style nowadays. Can I? You can possibly change the way you dress, right? If someone talks about how you dress, you can change your clothes. If someone talks about your hairstyle, you go, okay, I'm gonna get some braids, or I'm gonna get a weave, or I'm a, I can change my hair. But they talk about my skin complexion. I couldn't change that. That affected me differently anything I've ever experienced in my life. To this day, it'll make me cry. Because I can't change it. And they've constantly talked about me for years and years and years. When I won the Olympics, you see how you saw me on TV? They said, the ugly black girl won. I won the Olympics and they still talked about me. So there's times in your life that people don't talk about you. And the question you're going to ask is, what do I need to do to have these people not talk about me? You'll, in, in their eyes, you'll never be good enough. You absolutely have to care about your dream. You absolutely have to care about where you want to go. Because there are going to be times until you are never enough and you are better. Everything you could possibly think of. <laughs> and I promise you, you're enough. I'm here to tell you, you're enough and you're enough. Do you hear me? I know they get tissue for me. Pay attention. Look at me. They got it. You're enough. Because I know what you're talking about. That's why I stood up. You're enough. I have now traveled the world. And those people that talked about me, at home, maybe <coughs> still living with their mom. You are enough. I have been blessed to find my husband. I'm so happy. He's my best friend, y'all. Like, I call him up. You know, somebody's like, hey, babe. I'll be like, dude, that's my best friend. It is the most beautiful feeling in the world to be with somebody that you know loves you back so, 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 so much. Funny enough, we went to high school together. He was another guy at the school. He graduated second in our class. 
So if they say being smart is like, good, that's that's not cute, that's not what I always thought it was cute. Being smart is real cute. You know, let nobody tell you being smart is like, that's whack. Who does that? You. Right? I have two baby girls. One is three, the other one is nine weeks old. Saturday. Right? I know she's a little. But she cries so, so much. <laughs> she is a crybaby right now. But I'm just telling you, you're seeing the end product. But that is just a part of my story. The life you want to live, people are on the most only one to see the face of your story. But you are enough. Now that someone's talking, I'll say this. Do you have questions? Somebody in here better ask a question. I did all this. Good. Yes. What is your daughter's name? What are my daughter's names? Harper and Zoe. And so Harper is, no, I'm, I'm going to get to Harper is, was my last name. So my name was Dawn Harper before I got married, right? I got married, now it's Dawn Nelson. When I competed, this is a lot of information. When I competed, my last name was Harper Nelson. And so my husband was like, I think it would be beautiful to give her the name Harper. So her name is Harper Nelson. And I said, I got a little junior. So it's funny when I hear someone say her whole name. Because it takes me back to track, and I feel like I'm like, oh shoot, I feel like I'm competing. Yes. Do you still run track? Do I still run track? So I actually stopped in 21. Yeah, 20. So 21. Um, I stopped to have my daughter, my first daughter, um, and then I came back. The girl was snatched. I was girl the girl I had never left, and then um, I just had my other daughter, and so I'm working out to get back, girl. Miss Miss. But no, I um, I still do work out though. Um, and I tell, so my husband is the head coach of the track team. I tell the boys all the time, I will bust you up. I have these so many boys and broken so many hearts because they always want to race me. I'm like, I did this for a living, let's go. Mm -hmm. So you gotta run super fast, sticking in the Olympics? Right, super, super fast. She said you have to run super fast and get to the Olympics. Um, just to be honest, yeah. I mean, you do. You have to run really fast. But um, if you were to run track, and I'm sure there's a track team around here, you can test that out and see. Mm -hmm. If you want to know, I think you should try it. But also in track and field, there are other things. You there's long jumps. You can jump. Or there's high jump. You can high jump. You can over bar. Or you can throw. Track has so many things. So if you're like, I like running, good, you should try it. Okay. Uh, wait. Let's try something. Uh huh. Did you make a lot of money in the Olympics? Did I make a lot of money in the Olympics? Girl, I made a pretty penny. <laughs> I did. I made a lot of money in the Olympics. Yes. Blessed where I was able to buy my mom things, uh, buy my sissy things, and stuff like that. So, yeah. How long have you been running the track? How long have I been running track? So I started when I was twelve, and you know what? I'm not that old, okay? <laughs> but I started when I was 12, so. You didn't hear the number? They know, sorry. 26 years. What? That's a long time to be running for. So, yeah, I've run a long time. So, six. <coughs> okay. Okay. So, don't forget your questions. They said we, want, we have to go over to the gym. I want to answer your question, okay? So don't forget it. Okay. Don't forget it. Okay. Okay. So this is how we're going to do this. Oh, and real quick, later we're going to look at these, my bells. Okay. Yeah, they look at they come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, so let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's start with, I'm looking for the teachers. Teachers, first before I said, bring the young ladies down. Oh and sit the young lady in between the role of the boy. So I think we'll understand the boy once we get down. Yeah, we can't go out and make a noise down. I think we've been with somebody distinguished. I mean, just have a good time in here. So we can continue <laughs> down the hall. So, uh, Ms. Brad, if your little girls are front, you're not going down. So just sit still for one minute. All right, so let me see where I see Ms. Davis. I'm ready to go. Anybody you ever say something or you clap, so we're gonna do something like that, okay? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say everybody clap one time, we're gonna clap one time, okay? Then we're gonna clap two times, two times, then three times, then we'll see if you're ready to go, okay? Ready? Everybody clap one time. Everybody clap one time. Two times. 
One time. Three times. One time. Two times. All right, you're ready to go. All right. You didn't, you didn't know my name is Earl Austin Jr. And that's my younger sister there, Mrs. Thompson. I'm sure you know her. She's a very nice lady. Hope you're nice to her. And I am a writer uh, and also a broadcaster and announcer. I work for the St. Louis American newspaper. I've been writing at the paper for, oh goodness, over 30 years now. It's the, the paper is uh, the number one black newspaper in the country. And what I do and what I've done throughout my career is I cover sports. Now, who, like, let's say everybody here likes sports, right? Yeah. So, you, so who plays, everybody plays sports? Yeah. Do you like to talk about sports? Yeah. Do you, do you like to write? No. Yes. Yes. Who likes to write a little bit? Well, see, that's what I do. I used to play sports, but since I don't play anymore, I talk about sports, and I can write about sports, and that's basically what you guys do when you're together. You guys, you guys like to talk about who your favorite players are and who your favorite teams are, right? That's what I kind of do as well. Here's our, our today's paper here. I'll send you a copy, and uh, everybody can have one. I bought one for everybody. This happens on the front page. Anybody know who this is? I know it's hard to sell. You know what that is? No, it's not me. I wish it was. <laughs> That's you right there. That's me? Oh, oh I know somebody. Okay, it's a, it's a small picture, so. Okay. Anybody heard? Okay. His, yep, right. You know Jason Tatum? Yeah. yeah. Raise your hand if you know Jason Tatum. Okay. Who can you tell me about Jason Tatum? What is it? Tell me. Yeah, if you want to. Me. Go ahead. Tell me about you. Huh? Yeah, tell me what team he plays for. Boston Celtics. Very good. Who's your uncle? Oh, okay. Playing his uncle, see? Yeah, Jason Tatum, I, he's played for the Boston Celtics. He's one of the best players. He's not retired yet. He's, he's 24 years old. He's in his fifth season. One of, the, one of the pleasures of my job is I get a chance to see and write about, talk about players like Jason Tatum when they're younger. You know, I cover high school sports throughout the St. Louis area. And uh, you'll have, we're going to do questions too, so I'd, I'd like to you had your hand up. So I'm going to talk a little bit. But if you have questions, I'm going to ask questions. You can ask me anything you want about sports. I'll tell you a little bit about what I do. As I said, I cover sports and uh, we talk about high school sports through the St. Louis area. So it's probably five, six, seven years when you're in high school and you're playing whatever sports you're playing, there's a pretty good chance that I might be talking about one of you or writing about one of you. I hope so, because I, you know, I, I, my sister's told me there's some pretty good talent in this room. So I look forward to uh, meeting you down the road and hopefully writing about you and talking about how good you are and whatever you do in sports down the road. Now these are what, what grade are you in fourth and fifth grade? Yeah. Fifth grade? How, I, how it all started for me was sitting right here just like you are. I was in third, fourth, fifth grade. That's when I started to like sports myself. I wanted to play basketball just like you did. I wanted to play sports. I wanted to be a professional athlete and go to the NBA because I had an uncle that played in the NBA. His name is Wes Unsell. He played for the Washington Bullets. And his son now is the coach of the Washington Bullets. They're the Wizards now. They have a young man named Brad Beal, who's from St. Louis. Anybody heard of Brad Beal? He played, he went to the same school as Jason Tatum did, Shalmanai. So I was your age, and I wanted to play sports. But I also loved to talk about sports, and I also loved to read the newspaper all the time. When I was little, I always wanted my mother to get me a copy of the sports section, so I would read it just like my, along with my father. So myself, my, me and my father, we would always fight over the sports section. And I was four or five years old. So even when I got to school when I was your age, um, when I was doing my work, and I would have, I would have a notebook and would do whatever math or science, but I would always keep a separate notebook and write stats of all my favorite players, statistics, and keep up with what they were doing. 
and always, once or twice a year, the teacher would always take that, would find out what I was doing, take the notebook away from me. And then I would just get, go reach in my bag and get another notebook and start writing again on my favorite basketball, my favorite baseball players, or whoever. So that's how I got to love sports. And then when I went to high school, I went to McClure North High School, not too far away from here, and I played basketball on the basketball team, but I also wrote for the school newspaper, and I wrote about my friends who played on the baseball and on the football team, so I got a chance to just write about sports and give experience working on the newspaper. And then after going to high school, I went to a college, I went to Lindenwood University, which is in St. Charles, and I went there and I decided that I played on the basketball team for four years, but I also wrote on the school newspaper, and I covered all the other different sports that my friends played, and I also got a chance to work for the radio station as well and talk about sports. When I wasn't playing my own games, I would go to, we, would, we, we, wrote, we had a campus radio station called KCLC, and we played music mostly during the day, but at night we would do high school, we'd go broadcast high school games. So if I wasn't writing for the paper, I would go to a high school and we would broadcast football or basketball games for the radio station. So I did this when I was in college. So even in college when I was 18, 19 years old, I was kind of doing what I always dreamed of doing, not only playing sports, but I got an opportunity to talk about sports on the radio and write about it as well in our school newspaper. And so that's kind of what, so I always knew what I wanted to do. I was kind of lucky. Usually at our age, when you're younger, you, you're in, you want to do a lot of different things and you're not sure what you want to do. Well, I always knew I wanted to, if I wasn't good enough to make it to the NBA, which I wasn't, I did go to college, but I knew what was beautiful about this sports field is that if you, don't, if, you're, if you don't play sports, you can still be involved in sports in some way. You can, like I said, you can be a writer about it, you can be an announcer, or you can you know, be a trainer, uh, working with a, a doctor. There's just so many different ways. So I, get, I, I got a chance to go to the NBA Finals one year, years ago. Just not as a player, I got a chance, oh, I got a chance to write about it. I didn't get a chance to, uh, you know, I had a chance to go to the Olympics. A uh, young lady in the other room, Don Harper, is an Olympian. I got a chance to go to the Olympics uh, in 1996. Uh, the Final Four of the NCAA tournament, I got a chance to go to that as well. Uh, the Super Bowl, the, 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 the football league playoffs. These are things I've had a chance to experience and go to, but not as a player but as a writer, and as a reporter, and as an announcer. And that's basically what I do today. You know, when I'm not writing for the St. Louis American, like tonight, I'm going to announce a basketball game on ESPN uh, television, not the uh, stream, which is on your uh, internet. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that game, that college basketball game, which is a lot of fun as well. Or, and then I'll, I'll broadcast on a radio station as well. On uh, Friday, Saturday, I'm going to broadcast uh, St. Louis University, which I've been doing for over 32 years, just broadcasting college basketball as well. So the beauty of, of this is you can do anything you want when you, if you get into this kind of business. It's called communications. And as I asked, I asked you, a lot of you like to talk, right? And a lot of you enjoy sports. So this is a great opportunity for, for you if that is something that you want to do. And even at this age, there's so much technology and there's so many thing, different things than when I was your age. I know there's uh, I know people use a phone right now. You can use a phone now. And I've learned this. I learned from people your age and uh, my younger nephew, they said, I can go to a basketball game and just broadcast a game hook it up on my phone, and just broadcast the game on the telephone. That's a lot of fun. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a few questions before I go on. Let's start with you. I am six foot three. I'm, I'm, believe it or not, that's, that's short for a basketball player. 
Oh, yes, it is. I'm, I'm the same height as Steph Curry. He's 6'3". He's and he's, you, you watch the game, he's one of the shorter ones on the court, right? Okay. Now, Kevin Durant, he's 7 feet tall, right? Okay, let's go right here in the middle. How old was I when I started writing? I started writing uh, way back in high school. I've always written, but I started writing for a newspaper when I was about 14, 15 years old for my school newspaper at the corner. I started writing as a professional, getting paid for it, and when I got out of college, when I was 21 years old. Uh, let's go to this, let's start with each row. Do I coach any basketball? I used to coach. I used to coach Mrs. Thompson's team when she was in college at uh, Lindenwood University. I used to yell at her all the time, like she yelled at you guys. That's why I used to yell at you guys. She was a good player. She was in the Hall of Fame. I, I coached her for over three years, and now I don't. I don't coach, but I'll, I'll train like her sons, uh, Sean here, her youngest son, and her oldest son, Austin and Robin. I would train them, and, and they played high school and college basketball. Okay, let's go to uh, this room. Have I called you yet? No, you sure? Okay, go ahead. Pardon? What age did I start playing basketball? I started playing, oh, I played when I was, oh, you're, t you're in about fifth and sixth grade. But uh, when I started playing on teams, though, I played, it was in middle school, a little bit older. Huh? Oh, I played in the NBA, but I played college. My uncle played in the NBA. Okay, let's go to this row. Okay, we'll go right here and then we'll go right back here. Have I ever met a famous basketball player? I've met many because uh, a lot of them I meet, I meet when I'm young, when they're younger. Like I took two of them, like Jason Tatum, what you guys already know. LeBron James, haven't met him. Seen him play in person, but I haven't met him. I um, met uh, Kobe Bryant years ago at a basketball camp. I met Michael Jordan. Uh, go in the back here. Uh, right there with that. Right here. Sure. Hold on, everybody. Those are, I met, I've met many. Uh, those, have you ever met John Morant? John Morant? Yes, I have. Well, we met John Morant, but he was, we met John Morant in Memphis. Well, who knows John Morant? Everybody knows John Morant. We met John Morant, like I said, I broadcast at St. Louis University. We played John Morant's school, Murray State University, when he was a freshman in college. But he was, he was just a freshman, and nobody really knew about him yet. He was a good player, but he's one of those guys that was just kind of at a smaller college. And nobody really knew about him. The following year, that's when he became John Morant, the All-American. Now he's an all-star. Yeah, NBA All-Star. Okay, we'll go to this row, back to this row, in the back. Yes. How old are you? I am... Anybody want to guess? 54. 54. 54. 56. 57. There you go, 57. Ain't no way. Yeah. 57, yes. Okay, let's uh, go to the front here. Okay, everybody listen, 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 give me a question. I got a question. Okay, listen. Have I ever got a free ticket to a basketball game? That's the beauty about working for a newspaper or broadcasting. You never have to pay for a basketball game because you're working. You have a press pass to the game, you show it to whoever is at the game, at the gate, and you go in and sit down and Talk about the game or write about the game and have a lot of fun here. Okay, one more real quick. Have I ever got front row seats to a game? Once again, that, when you cover a basketball game, they put you right at, hold on, so we get you, they put you at press row right there in front of the seats. If you watch a game on TV, you'll see, you'll see people sitting, people with the players on the bench, and then you'll see uh, the front row where there's, you know, the famous people will sit. You know, you'll see Jay-Z at a game, and you'll see different, that's why I believe, just famous people. And then on the other side, that's where the announcers 
people who are announcing the game speak uh, or, or sitting as well. That, that, that's where she said. Okay, let's go back into this row. Anybody in this row have a question? Oh, and once, twice, let's go to this row. You were already there. Let's see if anybody else real quick. Okay, in the back. Have you ever played any other sport like soccer? I, not, I played soccer when I was in seventh and eighth grade in middle school. Wasn't very good at it, so I stopped playing. But we had a lot of fun playing it, though. Played with my friends on our, our grade school team. Okay. Let's go to this row. Okay. I, like, do you um, write about football? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. We covered, uh, I, I cover mainly high school football, and uh, I've covered that for almost 40 years now. And when the St. Louis Rams were here, we got a chance to cover the Rams. This was before many before you were all born. That's when they went to the Super Bowl two times and they won the Super Bowl. And they were still here as well. So yes, football is fun, although it gets very cold in wintertime. <laughs> and it's very hot in the beginning of the season as well. Okay. Anybody ever called on in this role? Okay, go right ahead. Have I ever played football? No. I wanted to when I was in seventh grade, but Mrs. Austin, my mother, would not let me play football. She said it was too loud. Uh, I was like, I want to play football, so she wouldn't let me play. So that's why I played basketball. I want to play baseball instead. Okay, we'll go with this right here. Have you, have you ever played basketball Have I ever played basketball with Mrs. Thompson? Yes, I did. I, we, we, I used to work with her in high school and college. And my father, uh, we used to play in our backyard all the time. And my father, Mr. Austin, the late Mr. Austin, he would push Mrs. Thompson in the bush when she'd go for a shot. Okay, let's go in the back. Yeah, it was fun. We used to push her and elbow her. Made her tough. Made her good. She was in the Hall of Fame. Because we made her, she was in the Hall of Fame. Okay, let's go back to this row. 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 Okay, let's you was on intercom, right? And then you like talk, like talking about the basketball and football people. Yes. Yes, yeah, so on the radio. Yes, I did. On the radio, and we talked about going. We go on radio shows. And sometimes we're on. Tele I'm on television on Friday nights. We'll do a Friday night football show and talk about. The, then like, then there's like a field game, like on the top of the thing. Right? Sometimes we're. On, sometimes we can be in the field, or sometimes we can be on the, on in the press box or on, on top. A lot of times I like to be on the field watching the action that way we're, we're recording on it and then we interview the players after the game. Who, who haven't I called on yet, real quick? If, you, if I call on you, put your hand on just for a second. Who haven't I called on yet? But only if you're sitting upright. Well, set up, set up, okay. Huh? Have I been to an NFL? Yes, I have. Yes. I went to see the I went to see the St. Louis Rams. <laughs> Tom Brady. I didn't see Tom Brady play live just on TV, but they did. Patrick Mahomes, yes. Yes. He's just in Kansas City, so we, we went to a Chiefs game about four years ago. And so. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I saw Lamar Jackson play in college when he was at the uh, University of Louisville. That's where we had family there. And I, I saw him play, I think, his first year in college at the Let's do one more. Robert and then uh, Mr. Austin wants to tell you a little bit more. Uh, were you going to tell them about how you got started? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. But I like, Robert, the, I like the interaction there. You like the interaction. Yeah. You want to get your question, Robert? Yeah. And we'll, we'll come back to questions. One more question here real quick. Robert, go for which one, Robert? What what name are you playing best? I played at McClure North High School, and I played at Lindenwood University in St. Charles. So that's where I played four years. See, I like this. That was fun when you uh, get a chance to talk. See, what what you just did to me. This is what I do all the time. I interview people. I talk to them, I ask them questions, I ask them questions about the game, I ask them questions about maybe their families, and you, what you what you didn't know, what you now know is you got a chance to experience what I do all the time. Yeah, too. Huh? Sit up, boy. 
except by, except by, I usually have a microphone, but you had a chance to just interview me and I answer questions. And it's just basically communicate, just having a conversation with each other. And basically, that's you, 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 this, is, this is your first interview that you all did. And you guys did very well. First, give yourself a hand. It's important, listen now, it's important to have success in what I've done. I've been doing this for almost 40 years now. And for you to have success, and if you might want to do this, it doesn't matter what you want to do. There are three things you, there are a couple of things you want to do. Main, first thing you want to do, I think, no matter what you do, I, I learn how to write. Now, it doesn't, you know, I'm a writer, but it doesn't matter if you go into teaching, you want to be a lawyer, or a doctor, or just any kind of, you know, Television, being able to write is very important to what you do. I've learned that over the years. Another thing is, it's important to listen because, you know, when, I do, when I'm interviewing somebody, you gotta listen to what they say because you gotta put what they say in the paper. You wanna make sure it's correct what they say. That's very important. So that translates to whatever you, when you're sitting in class and. Uh, you're listening to what your teacher says because obviously they're going to ask you about it later or if you're taking a test, if you listen, you'll know what they are talking about. And then, obviously, studying. These are things you learn when you're in school, study for a test or whatever. When I, go, when I have to interview somebody or when I have to broadcast a, uh, a basketball game, I have to know who like, the players are and I have to know who the statistics of the players are and talk about them. So I have to sit down and read about them. That way when I sit in front of a microphone or go on television to talk about them, I have to have an idea of what I'm talking about. So I'm sitting, I'm, I'm just like I'm sitting at home or, or watching TV, you're studying what you're doing. So these are, these are habits you're learning right now in school. Those are the things that I'm doing now at 57 years old. I'm doing the same things that you're learning to do right now and continue to develop as fourth and fifth graders. You, you do those things well, they never leave you, and they will make you be successful in whatever you want to do. And always we talk about you know, having goals and having dreams and whatever you want to do. And this is what I wanted to do ever since I was eight or nine years old. And when you do that, you continue to work hard and Things will happen for you that will help make you successful. You study, you listen, and then you work hard. And even if things don't go well, at some time you continue to work hard at it, and things will be very it'll be very positive for you as well. I'm gonna take a few more questions. How much time we got before we? Would you tell us about your um, before you answer some questions? Sure. This is a question. Um, would you, I, I, I like to, you know, talk about my family a lot, but at this time, would you run down your list of accomplishments that you've had, now, we call him Uncle Earl, Uncle Earl, but my brother doesn't like to talk about himself as far as his, all the accomplishments, that things that he's achieved, um, a lot, but even tomorrow, my brother is getting another, I say another, because he's going to tell you how many awards and huge achievements that he's received because of him playing basketball, being an athlete, and mostly because of his writing. So run it down, brother. Okay. Well, I went to high school, McClure North High School. McClure North, and they put me in the McClure North Hall of Fame right. seven years ago. And then I played college basketball at Lindenwood University, and they put me in the Lindenwood University Hall of Fame. In Why is that? In 2007. Why is that? Oh, because I got a few records there. I scored and rebounded, so I'm pretty good. Pretty good ball player there. 
And then, uh, they, then they retired my number, number 41, which I wore in 2013 as well. As far as writing, them, as far as writing and being a part of the media, I'm part of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, they put me in that about three or four years ago. The Missouri Basketball Coaches Association uh, Hall of Fame. That was in 2020, I believe, and I got up in that, so that's just a few. And then what's tomorrow's? Tomorrow's an Urban League, uh, St. Louis Urban League. Is, uh, uh, there are a bunch of us that are being honored in the, in the media field for media And then actually. if you ever go down Page Avenue in the city, in north side of St. Louis, you might see a portrait of my brother Earl. So he's got, it's called a door. It's a door. And there's so many doors. If you've ever been in St. Louis, there's doors of famous black uh, St. Louis's that uh, this wonderful painter painted for him. So you might see Tina Turner, you might see Scott Joplin, you might see the uh, the Boxing Brothers, the, what are they called? Spinks. The Spinks Brothers. There's a lot of famous St. Louisans that have this door down on page and my brother has one of these doors also. They had a nice um, ceremony for that. So he's very humble, but my brother works really hard and he has really tried to get himself prepared in order to do the job that he does. So he gets up every day and he's able to do something and make money at something that he really loves to do, which is write about sports. And that's what he's trying to under make you understand how important it is for you to listen and pay attention in your classes, because he didn't learn to write out on the street. <laughs> he learned to write in the classroom. You all understand? Everything, everything starts here. Your foundation is here. Everything you learn to do that you take with you once you leave uh, school, the things you learn here help, helps make you succeed. Even that little jump shot you're learning here. Yeah. <laughs> right, a few more questions, really, Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Let's go. Okay, let's go. right here in the front there. Am I famous? I don't know. Some people say, to my, to my family, I think. Well, I'm going to answer that. <laughs> Anywhere we go, when we're out in public. in public, at least one person comes up to Earl and tells him how much they enjoy him, his writing, how much they appreciate what he does. They remember him because they wrote, he wrote an article about them when they were younger. Now, Earl has been writing for such a wonderful, he has such a long career, he's writing about the children of the people he used to write about when they were kids, and he's writing about their children now. So, we get to see people, you, you know who Nelly is? The rapper, I think, is Nelly still popular with y'all? Yes. Okay, he's from St. Louis, and this, yeah, I know, right, he's a little from back in the 90s, and St. Lunatics. Well, all of those rappers played sport. They played baseball. And one of those famous rappers saw my brother out at the uh, gas station. They live in the area. And they came right up to him. Now, he's you know been on the Grammys and performed all over the world. He came right over to Earl and said, Mr. Austin, do you remember me? And then Earl told him exactly who he was. And he said, you, I remember you playing baseball. And he was so excited, this famous rapper, was he was so excited to see him. So you just never know when you're younger and you, somebody takes the time to write about some things that you try to accomplish as a young person, you, you take that to heart. You know what's even easier as well? Who's people, who's only be watch YouTube. 
Instagram and TikTok, social media. See, those things weren't around when I was your age. I just kind of had to, like I said, I used to just write about, keep my little notebook. You can almost, if you wanted to, whatever you'd like to do, you can almost do your own, you can do your own little show if you wanted to, talk about what you like to talk about, even at your age, if you can do it, talk about your favorite players, and just practice. It's easy, it's easy as that. And you, you probably know how to do it better than I do, you know. I'm an old guy just learning how to do social media and uh, those things, the TikToks and all those things. Uh, Instagram, though, yeah, ID. Right. That, so, that, so that's something, as you, you know, if you want to learn to do something like that, it, it would be a lot of fun. I wish I had those, those kind of things when I, when I was younger. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I'm going to live in a house. <laughs> Once. Oh, like stairs. Too old to climb upstairs. Money? Well, when I write a good story, Pay two dollars if I write a bad story to give me a dollar eighty-five. That was not too bad. Five thousand dollars. Four hundred and fifty-five million dollars. All right, now if you have questions, can we do one at a time by raising your hand? Okay, we're gonna go one. We're gonna go through a row, one row at a time. Yeah, Sit up there. Uh, two more questions. Uh, two more? Two more, and then we're going to take a pause. Yeah. Okay. So the girls can transition in, and then we'll be ready to move to the next one. Right. Two more questions. All right. Uh, oh, oh, yes, I've uh, met a few. We have, I've got a chance to interview a lot of uh, St. Louis Rams who are playing here. The rest of you need to remain quiet. And last question, let's go to the back Oh, do I know, the question is, do I know Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? First of all, do anybody know who Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is? Yes, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Well, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was the man that LeBron James broke his record for the scoring. Somebody said it over there. Good. Yes. I knew Prima We met Prima Bujabar. We used to play with used to play with the Milwaukee Bucks. When I when, when I was your age, we used to go watch him play with the Milwaukee. When he was this is back in the nineteen seventies. We used to watch him. Yeah, what's that? The sky book? The sky book, very nice. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. And so Kareem, let's see, here's, here's what you want to know. Kareem was one of the greatest basketball players to ever live. He's 74 years old. But Kareem is one of the smartest men who've ever lived, too. When Kareem wasn't breaking records and winning championships, Kareem was studying, reading books, going to lectures, and becoming knowledgeable about anything and everything about the world, which just goes to show that although he was a great basketball player, basketball wasn't what he was all about. Kareem was still a great, uh, well-educated, smart man that people still listen to to this very day. And uh, he's a great man that is still very respected as well. Mr. Austin, can I pause you? Go right ahead. We're going to party. Oh, yeah. Keep it on zero. Let's give our other guests a moment to come down. Give Mr. Austin a second. Don't talk. We still on the zero.
six, are they almost ready? They were all coming down? Okay. All right. All right. While she's setting up, we set up like this so that everybody would have an opportunity. So that everybody would have an opportunity to meet both of our special guests. Earlier down there, I got a chance to introduce Mrs. Harper Nelson. Mrs. Don Harper Nelson is an Olympic gold medalist. She's a multi-medalist in the Olympics, and she has already spoken to our girls, but you boys haven't gotten a chance to meet her. She's a track and field star, I believe, specializing at the 100 meter hurdles. That's what I was, I was getting to the hurdles. I was, getting to, I was getting to the hurdles, to the 100 meter hurdles, and she's from my hometown of East St. Louis. I like to turn up on that. I did not get a chance to introduce Mr. Earl Austin Jr. He's already introduced himself to the boys, but girls, you didn't get a chance to meet him yet. He's a Hall of Fame upon Hall of Fame, and I think during his presentation upon Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, did I say enough Hall of Fame? I think maybe one more, one more Hall of Fame. He's a Hall of Famer from, from college basketball to sports writing to other Halls of Fame. I don't, don't want to miss him, um, but he's been a prolific writer for the St. Louis American amongst others. And we thank him for coming today to talk to all boys. So girls, that's your introduction of him. And at this point, he's going to interview Mrs. Harper Nelson, and I'm going to turn it over to them. Thank you. Keep it on the zero, please. Two things real quick before we talk, talk to Don here. Guys, a couple of you guys asked me that I met any famous athletes, you know. Of course I told you one, obviously, who you all know, but Jason Tatum. Well, another one is Dawn here. Dawn is probably one of the most famous and one of the best athletes that we've ever had in the St. Louis area. Only a very few athletes in the world get to experience what it's like to win an Olympic gold medal. And you watch, who watches the Olympics? Very few, yeah, very few athletes get to get a chance. She did that. Where's that over there? I'm going to show the guy. Okay, I'll show you. Those girls have seen it. This is my goal. Watch. This is also my gold and then my silver. No, no, ladies. That means. <laughs> Wait on the question and answer point, guys. I know. The guys were quick. I know we're excited. Ready. I'm no. sorry, they were just doing question and answer. No now, see, the thing is, we're not talking the best in St. Louis. It's not the best in Missouri. 
is not the best in the country. We're talking the best in the world, possibly history. That's what we're talking about. And one more thing also, young ladies also, I told, I talked to the guys about what I do as a, a writer and reporter. If you watch TV, how many girls watch sports, play sports? I know a lot of people. If you watch TV as well, you see a lot, if they're not, you see a lot of young women, if they're not playing sports, you see them broadcasting or writing or talk about sports. They're hosting shows about the NBA about baseball, about the NFL. So you see a lot of young ladies who are in sports, not only just playing sports. And they're doing interviews as well. Okay, what I'm going to do is just, well, about five years ago, when, when you were inducted into the St. Louis Hall, how many years? Well, well about, uh, with my daughter's three, so I'm pregnant. Yeah, three years ago, Dawn was inducted into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame, and I had the honor of interviewing Dawn when she was inducted at the, at the Hall of Fame. So we're kind of, it's on YouTube, I think, as well. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of something that we did three years ago, talk, talk to Dawn. But Don, tell me about the, uh, at what point did you set a goal? Of being a what? So he asked, at what point did I set a goal of being an Olympian or wanting to be a track star? Uh, for me, that really was ninth grade. Ninth grade was when I really understood that I was different um, than the other track runners and my other teammates. Um, I felt like every time I lined up, I found just pure joy with it. Um, the fact that I could just run and get tired was fun because I was a kid that had all the energy in the world. And so for me, ninth grade was where I realized. And my coaches, they were very supportive, but they were like, let's just take it year by year because they understood how big and the magnitude of what I was saying was. You ran at East St. Louis High School and you ran under a legendary coach from the middle football life. How much did running for that great program of Coach Renoy help shape your future? Running for Coach Benoit in high school. So when I started when I was 12, I ran for him in the summertime. So I had a pretty good understanding of how he ran his program in the track team. When I got to high school, it was a little bit different because he also said, you have an understanding of my program and now the expectations are a little different. Meaning, when I say do something, we do it. We're not gonna do any back and forth. I know, that, I know what you can do. So when he gave me something that I would consider a fast time, I had to just comprehend, like, okay, Coach Noy knows me. He knows what I can do. Um, but he was tough. Coach Noy was very, very, very tough. And what helped was having teammates that, just to be honest, and when you're at track practice and your coach gives you a really, really hard workout where the people that heard me before say, you just going to die on the track, and you're just like, why am I here? I had teammates who were walking like, oh, my God, I think he's crazy. Why would he give us a sport? Oh, my God, oh, my God. And then what's the track, and then you got it done. So we did our little talking of like, why don't we give us such a hard workout? Then we always got the job done. So it's okay to be a little confused along the way of your journey of, can I really do this? But if you have people in your life, like your coaches that you trust and support, you do exactly what they say you work the program. So for me, running for Coach Kanoa, he coached, I don't know if you know her, but Jackie Joanna Kirsty, she's the greatest of the greatest of greatest of all time athletes. And since he coached her, I said he absolutely can handle my career because my goals are exactly what hers were to be the greatest athlete of all time. What did it feel when you made the Olympic team and got the chance to represent your country? So how did I feel when I made the Olympic team? Um, I always, I just got done kind of talking about this part. When I cross the line, they take top three in the, the globe, the U.S. United States of America only takes three. Each country can only bring three athletes, okay? So the United States is really, 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 really big. And I believe that I could be top three. So when I cross the line, I was top three. I always say, the ugliest, the most beautiful pictures in the world of me because I was on the ground like, oh my God. Like it is, I was, listen, I probably had slob coming. I was screaming, I was so happy. I was just thanking God 
that he chose me on that day to get top three. And I said, for a couple of years, they used those hideous pictures of me. Anytime that I would go and speak, they would blow up these really big pictures of me on the ground crying like, thank you, God. Um, but I love, slash, hate those pictures, but I love them because for me, it really speaks volumes to how I felt in that moment. It was the most pure expression of all the hard work, all the things that I had been through to cross that line. And then to go to the Olympics, getting off the plane and really understanding I'm in China. Like, this is China. This is where the Olympic, everywhere you went, you saw the Olympic rings. And I just kept thinking to myself, I'm going to be on TV. This is crazy. I'm going to be on TV. But then I really thought to myself, I remember as a kid dreaming of going to the Olympics. I remember thinking that this dream was so big and really wondering if I would ever honestly make it to the Olympics. But just deciding every single day to keep just trusting and believing. How did, when you won the gold medal, how did it change your life? How did winning the gold change my life? Um, first, the first thing I have to say is, it validated, it, it validated every sacrifice that I ever made. So there were so many times along my journey and in my life where I wanted to do this or my friends wanted to do that, but I'm like, I just, I can't do that today because I got practice in the morning or I want to do this and I can't because I have to chase this dream. But you always wonder like, am I giving up fun times with my friends? Am I giving up traveling somewhere with my friends or going home to see my family for this dream, what if it doesn't work out? And then my other funny thing I say is, I love ice cream. So I, ate a, I eat a lot of ice cream. When I was on the podium, I honestly thought like, not eating ice cream was worth it, because it was a lot of times where I wanted to eat my strawberry, Haagen-Dazs ice cream, and I didn't because of that sacrifice. Um, but it, it made me think of all of the hard work, all the days that I cried, all the times when I felt if I belonged, it was all worth it. And then to come back to the city of East St. Louis and to now see familiar faces. So first, I'm, I'm in China and I win, and I'm like, this is so crazy. I'm talking, you know, to family and friends back home. But when I got off the plane and like every, it's like everybody there knew how crazy it was that I had won the Olympics. So everybody's eyes were just like, oh, you won I was like, I did, I won. Like everybody, it was like high fives and cheers. We had parties, like multiple parties that I went to. It was just really fun um, to now be recognized everywhere I went. That was a little different because you can't just go somewhere and just let your hair down, but yeah. <laughs> probably was the time you were sitting here like you said. Children here, nine, ten years old. What was my mother doing at this time? Who motivated her uh, at that time? Who did you listen to to kind of help you sitting here? So, at, at this age, um, I wasn't even into sports yet. And so, this is what I was telling the young ladies that I was talking to earlier. I didn't know what track really was, right? And so, I was saying, when my mom told me about the idea of someone told her, your daughter should run. I had no idea what track was. But just think about it, if I would not have taken the chance to just try something new. Nowadays, I feel like so many times we're like, I don't know, I don't know those girls, I don't know those boys, I'm gonna just stay over here, I'm not gonna try it. If you just, what, what if I would have never tried? I would have never went to the Olympics. So I think it's okay to step outside your comfort zone. Um, the other thing that I say, and it, it's hard, it's hard to say, but I think that it speaks volumes and somebody may be able to stay positive. Around this time, if we're being honest, my parents separated. And so that was very, very, very hard. Because I am a daddy's girl. Wherever my daddy went, I wanted to go with him. He was taking a nap, I wanted to take a nap. We are going to get ice cream together. We are doing everything together. So that flipped my world upside down at this age. And it was hard to really comprehend that there are things that are going on in adults' lives that had nothing to do with me and my sister. My daddy still loved me. My mama still loved me. Um, he was just a phone call away. It was hard not seeing his face every day, but he's like, I'm a phone call away. So when I found track for me, that was a really good outlet to say, there's another place I can kind of release, you know, just some stress and worries. Or I don't have to think, to think at all about my home life. And so at this age, it was a lot of going, I trying to figure out just like 
if things were going to be okay. And it may sound crazy because you're just so young, but there's a lot of things that we're thinking about when we're this young that we probably had no business thinking about, but life is life. What is Don Harper doing today? Oh my goodness, what am I doing today? So many things. Um, I was telling the young ladies earlier, so I'm married. I married my boo thing. We so happy. He's so cute. Y'all, he's so cute. And we have two little bitties. I have a three-year-old and on Saturday, a nine-week-old. Um, I commentate for um, what's something called USA Track and Field at NBC. Um, so, I'm sorry. Track meets that go on the TV. You know how if you're watching, say football, watching football, there's a voice talking the whole time telling you like, oh, this play, this happened, this, this, this. Yeah. My voice is one of those voices for track and field. If you watch the track meet, that'll be my voice that you kind of hear. Like, she had a good start. That's my voice, so I'm doing that now. I love it because I'm not running anymore, but I get to stay connected to the sport. Um, and then that adrenaline keeps going. I'm like, ooh, that was a good race. And I do a lot of motivational talks. Like, I love coming to talk to you guys. Uh, helps me stay connected. And I do a lot of things with women. So I do a lot of stuff. Stay strong, I'm gonna keep my hips up. I'm thinking of the things I have to do in my race. Sometimes I'm like, Lord, get me out of here. Lord, get me out of here. This is terrible. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. I'm dying, I'm dying. Seriously, there's times where I'm like, I cannot believe I'm doing this. This is ridiculous. Who chose this life? Oh, me. So. Well, yeah, let me ask you one more about this. For, I, I talk a lot of them, all like to play sports, interested in sports. What's the most important thing for young athletes at this stage of their development? Nine or ten. Uh -huh. A lot of them maybe just forget. Absolutely listen to your coaches. Because to be honest, you're just starting. I know you see, say if you're playing basketball, like you said, you know, you see Tatum and you're like, I want to be just like Tatum. I'm gonna do this. Tatum had to start somewhere. Tatum started with listening to his coaches, coming to practice every day, getting your grades, because if you don't get your grades, you cannot play. You think I'm just real good, they just don't let me play. No one is that good. I want everything in sight, but if I didn't have grades, they were gonna be like, you need to go home to your mama, because you can't uh, practice or whatever. So at this age, I was absolutely, I was looking at my coaches like, what am I doing today? And that was honestly all that I did. And I watched a lot of running. I was like clicking and trying to play stuff over and over and over again. So you guys, I mean, nowadays you got all YouTube and everywhere, so you can watch 24 seven. You can be studying your little sports. Yes, I wanted to a question. So how long have I been traveling the world? So I started really traveling the world. I did a little bit of traveling, but it was still in the States when I was in high school. Uh, but really traveling the world at 24 years old. Um, and then I went to a lot of places in France. Then obviously the Wait, 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 wait. Did you go to Florida? <laughs> have I been to Florida? Yes, I've been to Florida a lot. Girl, I've been to China. 
<laughs> China is so much further than Florida. Yes. Have I ever been to Egypt? Um, I've been to, no, Thessaloniki. No, I have not been to Egypt. Okay, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna take them one at a time, one at a time. Yes, please. How many what? Oh, how many, my, I have no, I could not count. I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was taking pictures with like Sabrina Williams. <gasps> what? And when I met her, I was like, Hi, Sabrina Williams. Yes, Sabrina Williams. I was so starstruck. She was really nice. Yes, the famous tennis player. Okay, in the back. Uh huh. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh huh, sweetie. You. What's the boot? Yeah. You gotta speak up for me. Before I start running, what do I think to myself? So at diff there's different things at different times. So before I start warming up, um, I literally think to myself like, okay, you know, we've trained, we're ready for this. It's about to be fun. Like I'm trying to keep it light because you can't go too heavy on yourself mentally. Because I start my warm up about an mm, hour and a half to two hours before my race. I can't go like, I'm about to kill him right now. I can't do that for two hours, right? So I'm literally telling myself, man, this is crazy. We're in China right now. That's crazy. We're in Italy. I'm just thinking of those things. As it gets closer, then I'm now starting to think of, okay, for the first hurdle, so now I'm going to get technical. If y'all want to get into my head, I'm like, yo, we drive for the first eight. When I get the first hurdle, I'm about to snap down. And so I'm now breaking down my race. And I'm saying all the little bitty details that me and my coach have talked about over time. But I'm trying to tell myself in the same time, enjoy this whole process because you will not run for forever. Thank you. I'm going to stop us right here because we're going to have time. We're getting close to the time that we start doing dismissal. Not all the way there, but we need time for you all to get back. First thing we want to do, we want to have time to do this. On the count of three, I want you to shout out thank you and get back real quiet. One. <laughs> because we don't ever want to invite our guests in and not tell them how much we appreciate them for taking time out of their day. If they are in all of these halls of fame and doing all of this, it is because they are working diligently to make things happen. So on the count of three, one, two, three.
Thank you. 